Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter are the seven wastes. We're going to go back to lean and look at the seven wastes and in particular this is a response to someone that was asking me about the waste of motion and how the waste of motion can be about the product. Because one of the things I say is that all the seven wastes are about the product. So let's take a look at this. So we're going to take a look at the seven wastes, the seven lean wastes. By the way, I will remind you, there are only seven. Forget this eighth waste, ninth waste. It is complete nonsense because these seven wastes are about the product. So what have we got? Let's go through Tim Wood. We've got transport. We've got inventory, specifically unnecessary inventory. Not all inventory is bad. We've got the waste that we're going to take a look at. We've got motion. We've got waiting. Overproduction. Overprocessing. course my personal favorite because it's money in your pocket defects errors now one of the things I say is that it, the, the, and this is to get your thought process right to get your people thinking in the right way because whenever they think of waste they think of people they think of productivity they think what they're doing and they always say I'm a hundred percent effective there is no waste yeah when you point the fact it's the opposite most of what you do is waste and there's very little productivity but that can only be said if these seven wastes relate to the product okay so and, and that's the way I like to put it even with motion simply because if we get trapped in the notion that it's about people we look at the wrong element of waste we look in completely the wrong places for the waste and I'm just gonna go back to a little example and I know I've used this before in previous videos I used to work for a company Rexel who, who made this uh, stapler we used to make this stapler in the factory that I worked at at the time and one of the things that I became aware of when I was making this stapler was how much waste was in the factory because in order to make this single item this one if you total up all the work, the pressing, the plating, and the assembly, and the boxing, etc., there is only 10 minutes worth of work in this product. Okay, so there's just 10 minutes. So let's put a little timeline up here. And what does the timeline represent? Well, the timeline represents the total time, the material, the product, in other words, the total time, the material is actually inside the factory. And when we worked it out, the material was inside the factory one month. And during that time, 10 minutes worth of value from the customer's point of view, because they only value the pressing and the plating and the assembly. Only 10 minutes worth of value was added inside that one month. So inside this timeline, there's little slivers of activity that happen to add up to 10 minutes. Let's just put four of them in there. And the rest of the time is waste. Now if I'm gonna to say to somebody, 99% of what you do is waste, 
I can't focus on their time. I can't focus on their activity because they're going to say, yeah, but, but I'm working for seven and a half hours a day. I'm doing stuff. I'm, I'm making stuff. I'm productive. How, how can you even come close to 99% waste? It's because I'm looking at it from the point of view of the material and I'm measuring the flow time. And when I measure the flow time, how much of flow time is valuable, how much of the flow time is something else, is waste. Um, so look, one month. Well, if you can work it out for yourself, but one month. If we stick to minutes, there is 9,900, if we work on 22 working days, 22 working days, seven and a half hour days, 9,900 minutes worth of working time. In that time, 10 minutes got added to that product. There you go, work it out for yourself. Well, I can tell you, that's how much value got added. The amount of time, whilst that thing was sitting inside your factory, the amount of time we had in value was actually just one thousandth of the time that it was in there. Now if I'm going to make that statement, I, I can't point to people, because they're going to say, yeah, but we were busy. I know you were busy. The customer didn't get the product though. That's the point. Does the customer get the product? So the first thing to say is that's why I concentrate on the product because that's how you get the waste measurement. That's how you measure it. So if I, if I concentrate on motion, of course, where's the motion? Well, motion is typically at the point of activity. It's, it's in the green bits. It's in the 10 minutes. Um, you know, so if you've got a, I don't know, so you've got an operator Maybe it looks like this. And I've got a workbench. Yeah, and then they've got boxes. They've maybe got boxes of material. Standing on the workbench maybe. The motion. Is this bit here when they of course they're going to build the product here so here's your motion so the motion is quite a detailed thing it's at the point of activity it's normally in the green blocks so the first thing i'm going to say of course is why are you going to bother optimizing the green blocks when that's going to do nothing to get rid of waste hardly anything at all. I mean, just imagine, just imagine you had a, a, a line balance. So let's say you have a line balance and it's totally out of kilter. Let's say our four blocks look like this. And we have a line balance that looks like that. And you say, well, fantastic. If I go and attack the motion here, and I cut that down, what will I do? Well, you know what? I'll double the speed. Well, I'll double the speed. I can half the number of people in theory because I'll double the speed traveling through the, traveling through the green blocks. So what you just did was you took your 10 minutes down to five minutes. You'll be patting yourself on the back and saying what a fantastic productivity increase you got. And you'll be saying how much money you've saved. Fantastic. Ask yourself this question, what does the customer see? You know what the customer sees? Nothing. I don't see anything. The total time inside the factory is still a month. You've still got, in fact, it's kind of worse now because you've made this, you've made the value go down. So it's, it's half that, so it's even like that now. So what does the customer see? The customer doesn't see anything. The customer sees no improvement at all. So you can see that I, I, I want to concentrate on the, on the big block and I want to concentrate on the little bit here, the 10 minutes. But even if I did want to look at the 10 minutes, I'm probably going to look at the 10 minutes further down the line because inventory, 
waiting, overproduction probably. And because of the others, I'm going to do lots of transportation because my factory is really big. So I'm going to get lots of transport. So I'm probably going to attack the other wastes first. Motion is going to be one of the, the last things I tackle once some of the big lumps have come out of that one month. Maybe when I've got it down to a week, I might think of tackling some motion, but even at a week, still plenty to, plenty to go at. So this is about the product. It can only be about the product because that's how you measure the waste. I, I couldn't talk about people. If I told people they were 99% waste, they'd get pretty upset, wouldn't they? But if we say 99% of what happens to the product or service traveling through this building is just queuing, it's just waste, then they get the point and they don't feel personally attacked. But if you tell them that 99% of what they do is waste, they're gonna feel personally attacked. Now then, let's still concentrate on this because I wanna talk about motion and I want to show you simple ways, things that perhaps you don't think of, of how to get rid of motion, and then maybe how motion might play through into valuable, a valuable change in your company. How does it change into making more money? Because that's what it's about. Let's take a look at motion and a little bit of some ways of how to get rid of it. Okay. So we're gonna take a look at how to remove motion from the workspace and uh, also to deliver to the workspace in order to allow that to happen. Uh, but also, we're gonna take a look at, well, where does the money come from? Where does the saving show up? Where's the real money in lean? So we're gonna take a look at that in a second. Just before we do, I just wanna say that um, um, this is more Six Sigma than Lean, but uh, if you're into Six Sigma and you want to know all the things that I teach in Six Sigma, my book, Drink Tea and Read the Paper, um, please buy a copy if you, uh, if you want a little bit of instruction on Six Sigma and how to get processes to be defect free, so that particular waste. Um, also, please leave some comments uh, below, so if you like the video, if you don't like the video, leave some comments. Uh, if you'd like to take the Six Sigma challenge, if you invite me in to fix a technical problem, if I can't fix it, don't pay me. So take the Six Sigma challenge. And if you'd like other topics to be covered in any video, please leave a comment. And if I can, if I can cover it off with a video, I'll certainly make one for you and post it on my YouTube channel. But let's take a look at the, the waste of motion. Now we're gonna use an example. This is a real example. I, I went into a factory that made um, seats for uh, earth moving equipment, uh, I would call them in the UK, we have a manufacturer called JCB, so that's typically what we call them. So if you've got the, a backhoe, you've got a bucket on the front and a backhoe on the back, that's known as a JCB in the UK. Um, in other parts of the world, there will be different manufacturers, but what we're making here is we are making a seat for earth moving equipment. Now, sometimes these seats are quite complex. They are sitting on hydraulic and sprung loaded uh, platforms these days. They're not just a simple steel bucket as they used to be on an old tractor. Um, they've often got various kind of uh, levers and uh, sometimes they've got electrical attachments and things. So there's a lever to be able to turn the seat all the way around and all sorts of things. So they're quite complicated, these things. So we're looking at a production line for making one of these seats. And what we've got here is five pallets for the five pieces that make up this item. Now the pallets are all one meter. That's the way they were delivered to the factory. And then what we've done is we've delivered those to the production line like that and put them on the production line. Of course, in order to do that, I'm going to have to use a forklift truck. Yeah, so, so it's going to be quite difficult to get these to the to the production line. Got to have a forklift truck. Got to have a forklift driver. Got to have white gangways, etc. So we're delivering the five pallets to a production line. Now, of course, what we've got then is we've got an operator working 
to assemble these pieces. So here's the guy's workspace. Now of course, the smallest this production line can be, the smallest it can be, is five meters. Now that's because of the box size, the unit size. So we're talking, we're talking batch size here. We don't tend to think as, of, of the pallet size as a batch size, but it, but it is a batch size. Uh, this unit size, we've, de we've decided to deliver them by the pallet and by the fact that we've, that's what we've chosen, what you've done is you've locked this five meter size into the production line. So of course now the operator has no choice but to put all this motion into getting the pieces to his workspace and then assembling them together. And to make matters worse of course, probably what he's doing is he's accessing the components from the top and as he works his way down the, so his boxes disappear out of this out of this pallet and the boxes go down and down and down what's he got to do well he's got to reach in and lift these things he's working it's really really hard um, lots of motion lots of hard work very ineffective yeah now all we're going to do is just say let's do something different i don't want to deliver i'm just going to change the batch size now the batch size in lean is super important um, because every time you reduce the batch size, you save money. Every time you reduce the batch size, you get rid of the waste. You compress that one month of time down that I talked about earlier. So we're going to do something very simple at this workspace. and We're just going to cut the batch size down. And what we're going to do, we're going to assume that uh, on the pallets, let's just keep it simple. I mean, these would be three dimensional, but we're going to assume that there's 16 units on each pallet and instead of delivering one pallet's worth we're going to go to the warehouse and we're going to pick one and we're going to deliver one to the point of activity now what does that do well of course if you deliver one there's five of these things you collapse this workspace down. So suddenly, it was five meters long, we've divided it by four. Well, suddenly this workspace, look, 1.25 meters long, how about that? Bang. So, operator, still here, at the point of activity. There he is. There's his workspace. Now, look. Look what we've done to the motion. We've destroyed the motion. We've got to have reduced it by fourfold. We've got to have done that because we've reduced all the distances fourfold. Okay, so now, of course, one of the things you're going to say, yeah, but I can't, if I go to a forklift truck and pick a single box, that's super wasteful. Yeah, well, that ain't where we're going to deliver it anymore. What we're going to do is this. We are going to go to the warehouse with a simple cart and we are going to put the five boxes on a simple cart and we're going to wheel this to the point of activity so now what we've got we've got the five pallets in the main warehouse yeah and what we're doing is we're taking a single unit off each one. So of course he's walking down the gangway. Bang, box, box, box. Now one of the things you'd be doing, you'd be putting all of these easy to get at down on the floor so that he can just walk down and do this, making it so much easier to get the materials. What else might you be doing? You'd be putting this as close to the point of activity as you possibly can. So this milk round that's going on is as short and as easy as you can do. You don't need forklift trucks anymore. We can reduce the width of the gangways. We don't need forklift trucks anymore. 
We don't need any licenses. We don't need any training. We don't need any forklift trucks anymore. We don't need anywhere to park them. So the size of the factory is getting smaller. The backup resources are beginning to collapse. What else we got here? Look, look at the size of the factory now. Before we started, look, the size of the factory was this big. Yeah, and of course it would have had a gangway for forklift trucks, but let's just take the working space. So the working space would have been that big. Now look what we got. The working space is that big. So think about this. We're making more through 75% less space. We're making more, because he's gonna be making these faster through 75% less space. So 75% of that working space is available to you. And here's where the money is. What are you gonna do? You're gonna fill it with other production lines and you're gonna make four times as much money through the same factory. That is where lean scores over every other technique. If you want to, you can work out how much money this saves. You've made this person much quicker over here. There's money to be made, of course there is, but that isn't where the cash is. The cash is in the fact that you make four times as much material through the same factory. So all the backup resources and the maintenance people and all the computer guys and all that kind of stuff, got the same amount of people, same amount of factory, you're not heating it and lighting it, not building extensions which are expensive, maybe having another factory which is a mile away and you have to transport between the two sites because you haven't got enough room on your current site to extend. All of those kind of costs collapse and disappear and that's where the money is. So although we've gone for the waste of motion, speed, the operator, that's not where the money is. That's why you don't want to look at your people. The money's not in the people. The money is in the extra service, the extra cash you can get through your business. And that is how lean works. Lean works by making your company make more cash. It doesn't work by just reducing everything to the bare minimum and making everybody redundant. If you do that, it simply does not work. The waste of motion and the power of the box size. The smaller the box, the faster you work and the more money you will make. The power of the seven wastes.